Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Mike Westerlin. I'm the Vice President of Investor Relations for Hecla Mining Company. I've been with the company for seven years. I want to talk about Hecla. I've only got 10 minutes. We're at booth 103. If you have any questions, please come by and ask them. I'm happy to talk about any of these topics in more detail. The tone of the presentation is about value, but before I start, I'll make forward-looking statements. I urge you to review the cautionary statements in our filings with the SEC. So who is Hecla? For those of you who aren't familiar with the name, we're the largest primary producer of silver in the U.S., the third largest producer of lead and zinc in the U.S., also a very large producer of gold. We're a big company, a billion-dollar market cap. Um, we've got long-lived mines, low-cost mines. We're in very, very good jurisdictions. It sets Hecla apart from our peers. Look at where are we. We're in Alaska. We're in Idaho. We're in Nevada. We're in Quebec, Canada. And we're in uh, what we consider a good part of Mexico. Um, why are long mine lives important? Because as you have a longer mine life, you have more exposure to the metal, you have more chance of making money from the metal, you have more time to understand your deposit, how to improve it, how to invest in technology. And we're, for companies our size, for billion dollar companies, I would say we're one of the leaders in introducing new technologies. We have trucks that will drive by themselves, we have drills that drill by themselves, we have fans that will turn on and off by themselves, depending on activity. All of this leads to more efficient operations, which means when you have long mine lives, you have the chance to make even more money. And more safer operations as well. Um, as I say, we're a low-cost, high-margin company. We've got a good history. We've been operating since 1891, so about 128 years or so. We've got about 70,000 retail shareholders in the U.S., to give you a sense of scale. Probably there's 12 of them in the room. There's 70,000 across the U.S., approximately. Um, we've been trading on the New York Stock Exchange for more than 50 years. Um, but what's happened with Hecla is, in my opinion, in the last year, there's been, we have some issues that we're facing and that we're addressing and we're knocking them down. But that's, that's, that's caused the value of the company, this big, strong producer of metal, to, to be impaired, I would say, and the stock performance as well. And so it's important we address them. And I'll talk about three of them right now, and I'll go into a little more detail as we go. So one of the challenges we're facing is we have 500 million, just over 500 million of high-yield notes. They're due in May of 2021. So we would like to roll those notes before May of 2020, before they go current. Um, and so what are we doing about that? One thing we're doing is we're generating quite a lot of positive cash flow right now. If you saw our production release from a couple weeks ago, you'll have noted about 26 million more cash than we had the quarter before. So the objective will be by the end of the year, repay our revolver line of credit, uh, fully repay it. Now that's out of the way. Um, and, and increase the EBITDA in the company to get our, our leverage ratio down. And as I said, we expect to refinance in the in the first half of 2020. And when we go to, I'll talk about bonds actually towards the end of the presentation. We'll talk a little more detail. Let's move on. So that was the first challenge, refinancing the debt. Second challenge, Lucky Friday has been on strike for a couple of years and ramping up that production. And, and what we're finding is there are people that are crossing the picket line. We do have a machine coming called a remote vein miner, which will cut the rock instead of drilling and blasting, which could revolutionize the mine. So there's, there's actions that are happening down there that I think are positive for the mine. And you'll see it ramp up in production, in my opinion, as as these come to fruition. And finally, Nevada. We bought Klondex. We closed the deal in July of last year. It hasn't been as good as we'd hoped it was. Um, the, the original plan was... Uh, we'll actually talk about what that was, but we, want, we like the exploration potential there. We thought it would generate more cash flow than it has. So what we've done is we've stopped the spend down there. We've stopped the spend, and that's led to the increase in our short-term liquidity that we're talking about. Um, we paused that significant investment that wasn't generating us the return until we better understand the project, until we have the water permits in place to deal with the more water that's coming in, until we have third-party milling agreements that we're pursuing with, uh, with large mining entities in the area, which should lower our cost of transportation and our cost of mining. So there's a lot of action down there, but it isn't translating into cash flow and value yet until uh, until we can crystallize some of these things. And as we do, you'll see us start to invest more money in there again once it makes sense, but not until then. Because we have to make sure we keep the company big and strong to go into our refinancing in the best possible light. So talking about our assets, we have five main mines. There's two, there's a line down the middle here for a reason. The two mines on the left, Green Creek and Casa Berardi, they generate about 85% of our revenue and almost all of our cash flow. That's the economic engine of the company. And the mines on the right, San Sebastian in Mexico, our Nevada assets and Lucky Friday, all have the potential to be significant, but it's not recognized yet in the stock and we have to actually turn them into more significant mines. And so we'll be working on that. A takeaway on our big mines that I take a lot of comfort from is when we bought Greens Creek, it had a seven-year mine life. It now has an 11-year mine life. We bought Casa Berardi, it had a six-year mine life. 
and it now has 15 years. So we're able to extend and improve these mines and we're looking to do the same kind of actions in the other assets. Our big mines keep getting better. This is Green Streaks on the left, Casabrardi's on the right. In our technical reports that came out in April, Green Streaks value, just reserves, is about a billion dollars. Casabrardi's value, just reserves, is just under, it's about 540 million. So, you know, you're talking about a billion and a half dollars of value for those two mines, just looking at the reserves, and you look at us trading at a billion dollar market cap. So there's significant value there. Um, and if you look at the life of these mines, you look at the reserve life in the bottom left, the dark blue line is our reserves at Green's Creek. The blue line in the middle is the measured and indicated resources. The pale blue line is the, is the inferred resources. Obviously, there's a lot more material coming along as we can convert it. So my point is that we talk about reserve life being 10 years at Greens Creek, 14 years at Casa Barati. There's a lot more material behind that. Our transformative mines, this is Lucky Friday. Here it is, about a mile and a half of depth. There's about 20 to 30 more years of mine life. There's very high grade material here. You see it's running almost 90 ounces silver, almost 50% lead. We want to get into that area. That's where it starts making money. It'd be really helpful if the workforce was back. Uh, it'll be helpful when the remote main mining machine arrives. We'll be operating more efficiently there. So there's a lot going on there, and there's a lot of value here to be surfaced. Um, and that's you know if and when the workforce comes back. Obviously, El Toro mine. This is in or this is a deposit in San Sebastian, Mexico. I talked about it briefly. The, the brief history of San Sebastian is we've owned it since 1999. We made a lot of money uh, in the early 2000s. We ran out of high grade. We shut the mine down. We sold the mill. We explored it for almost 15 years. Found a bunch more high grade, re and reopened the mine again. Rented the mill back. Almost no capital. Made a whole bunch of money. About 150 million in two years. And we've mined through a lot of that material now. But this is potentially more oxide material. This is a longitudinal image. You're looking sideways at the earth. The line that you see is actually would be the surface of the earth. And where you see the purple, that's high grade. So we're starting to find a nice collection of high grade near surface and it definitely requires more investigation. So that's one opportunity to extend the life. The second opportunity is at depth. I don't have a slide on it. The second opportunity is at depth, the sulfide material. Uh, we're doing a bulk sample, 26,000 tons. We're running it through a third-party mill, just, which is our strategy, very little capital. We're, we're hiring mining contractors. We don't own any trucks down there, basically. And that also has the opportunity to extend Stan Sebastian's mine life. So there's several opportunities at the same time we're moving forwards on. Nevada, I mean, this is the asset. Why did we buy Nevada? Three basic reasons. It's got 110 square miles and really good mining jurisdiction. And, and, and you know, on the same trends as a lot of the big mines in Nevada. So great exploration potential. It's got the hotter Graben deposit, which has the potential to be very large. It's under, it's, it's, it's uh, at depth near the Hollister mine that needs to have a lot more holes drilled into it. And we want to do that. And finally, we have the Fire Creek operation, which originally we had hoped would generate enough cash flow to pay for everything, and it hasn't. So we're slowing down the development now. We're, we're reducing the spend, and what that's allowing us to do is to reassess this, to go through those steps I mentioned earlier in order to figure out what's the best way to mine it, what's the way that we can make the most money, what makes the most sense and reduces risk for the company. And you'll see us uh, increasing our activity once we figure that out. Um, and then our f financial position, we're, we're working on stabilizing the financial position. This is a slide, I've talked about bonds. The blue lines are where our bonds were trading and our peers' bonds in May of this year. So our bonds, we have 500 million of high yield notes approximately outstanding. The bonds are trading at 12.8%. They're, they're down now trading more in the high 7% range. It's about a 450 to 500 uh, basis point or 45 to 5% improvement in yield on the bonds. Um, our peers were up around nine, they're now down around six or seven percent. The point is that the environment is a lot better today than it was in May for people with high yield debt in the mining, in the gold mining industry. You've got higher prices, you've got other financings have been successful. You look at El Dorado, they, they refinanced their bonds in approximately May or June, and they got about 10 percent, and they're now their bonds are trading down at uh, about six and a half percent. So a substantial improvement, which which gives us comfort that when we go to renew the bonds, the hope is we'll just roll the 500 plus million out for five to eight more years, depending on what the market will give us. And if the rate is a little higher than where it is today, well, we're financially strong enough now that the spend in Nevada has been reduced. We're financially strong enough to bear that. And if 
the market said, well, we're not going to give you 500 million, maybe we'll give you a slightly smaller number. Well, we have other opportunities and other options available to us to make up the difference. And one of the examples would be we have the revolving line of credit. I said the plan is repay the revolver by the end of the year. Well, there's $250 million of security over that revolver. Once the revolver is repaid, you don't really need a facility of that size, which opens up the possibility of a bank loan or bank debt or an amortizing loan in order to uh, cover that. So lots of opportunities there. We're going to have a stronger second half than the first half, a lot more gold being produced. Reduced. We stopped the spend in Nevada. We've reduced our GNA, but our GNA and our capital and our exploration by 25 million. And the priority is repay the revolver, get the leverage down, get the notes renewed, and I think you'll see a lot more value created in the stock. So, Mike Westerlin, Hecla Mining Company, Booth 103. If you have any questions, come by and see me. Thanks for your time.